I've been using Lake um, on systems for ages, right from yonks and yonks ago when it was the original kind of Dolby, no, before Dolby. Contour. Yeah, Contour. Um, and loved it. And now, so the LM26, I loved the bits. Loved the Mesa EQ. And I'm one of those sad people that thinks it's kind of the nicest sounding EQ out there, really. Because I can't hear it. It does what it says on the tin, if you like. And I like that. Dante was a thing that I'd, I'd kind of jumped on quite a lot because um, I love the idea of it and as a transport medium I think it's great. We did some work with it um, with a lot of assistance from Sim last year on a mad, mad fireworks show and it's insanity. You know, it's the sort of job where your first mission of the day is to row 200 metres across a moat with a fibre cable because your PA gear is on an island in the middle of a moat and your control position is 250 meters that way. <laughs> yeah, no, it worked really well. I'm, so yeah, and now the, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of an iLive fan and uh, iLive like a few other people have jumped on the let's put Dante as an option card. Um, yeah, love its bits. I had a, a look at uh, um, what it can do. I think where you've got uh, stuff like multiple console matrixing, now that could be quite a good idea because um, most people's answer is to put in another small console that just takes lots of line inputs and then, you know, this fader up is this desk, that fader up is that desk, rah, rah, rah. When what you really want is a nice transparent matrix. Uh, now, I have no issues with the lake being transparent, but it's also, you know, I'm, I guess you could also add in a few little safety things and the dual redundancy and the fact that it'll drop different, uh, select different inputs if, uh, if you lose clock on something. Good idea. You know, so you just feed in analog as well as digital. Um, if the digital falls over, which they sometimes do, um, you've got that analog redundancy backup. Can't be a bad thing, can it?